Hi, I'm Dennis Moldovan, Product Specialist here at WTS Broadcast, and I'm joined here today by Tom Crocker from uh, Sony, who is... The Product Specialist for Broadcast and Cinematography. And Tom's here to show us and talk, uh, talk to us uh, today about this, the FS7 II. So, take it away, Tom. Okay, um, so this is the FS7 II, which is a great new product that we've made. Now, for those people who are familiar with the FS7, which, um, and thank you to all of them, is an awful lot of people now, uh, it's going to look pretty similar. And the FS7 II is very much an evolution of the FS7. We released it a couple of years ago at IBC. We had loads of great feedback and a few things we could improve. Um, so what we've done is taken the FS7 back to the factory and made a few changes to it to get a little bit more out of it and squeeze in a couple of features that people are really looking for. So let's start, for example, at the back here. Um, if I open the card door here, um, and I can show you there, you can see that there's a lot more space in order to get the cards out. A lot of the features that we've improved here, a couple of sort of headline things, but a lot of the things we've done are minor tweaks to the camera to make it a much nicer thing to work with day to day. So the cards are now much, much easier to take in and out because we've moved them, given it a bit more space there. So even if you're wearing gloves or something, much, much easier to work with, particularly at this time of year. Um, this door for the audio pots now opens downwards rather than off to the right, um, which is uh, a nice improvement because that was getting in the way of some kind of operations there. Now once we start to move further towards the front of the camera here, we start to get some more significant changes. We've got a number of um, new textured uh, assignable buttons there. There's now a total of 10 assignable buttons, which really should be enough for pretty much everybody. Uh, one of the reasons we've put in so many more of them is that you might want to use those for control of the new ND filter mechanism. Now, for people who saw uh, are familiar with the FS5, um, which is another fantastic camera that we've made, one of the really revolutionary things we put in that was a new type of ND filter. That filter allows us to change the level of... Um, ND from between a quarter to a 128th entirely fluidly. Um, so we can then dial in whatever quantity of ND we want. Now that's controlled by this wheel here. Um, it's just like an ordinary ND filter wheel. You've got clear, you've got one, two, and three. Now the reason we've said one, two, and three and not quarter, sixteenth, sixty-fourth or something is because those are now assignable presets you can put in camera. You can also use this wheel here, you can see it says ND right there, to adjust the level entirely freely. The really exciting thing and the thing that all of the FS7 owners were asking for after we launched the FS5 was can we please have that filter in this camera? Because the really exciting thing is you can also put it on auto. And if you put it on auto, that means particularly if you're inside following someone outside um, or doing a longer shoot over the course of a day, it just means that you can lock that off and lock off your depth of field by leaving the iris. So you no longer have to use the iris as a primary method of controlling exposure. So that can really change the way that you shoot something. And we've had nothing but fantastic feedback and that's why we included it in this model here. Then we can move to the front. Now, on the front, what I'll do is I'll pop the lens off. And as I pop the lens off, you'll notice I'm doing it in a different way to the way that I used to. Um, because we can see we've now got this ring here. Perhaps reminds us of a B4 or PL mount. Um, and that's because it is. A lot of people, particularly if you've got rods and a follow focus or something like that, having to twist the lens can be quite an annoying way of changing the lens. Um, particularly if you've come from a video world. From a stills photography world, people are much more used to that type of thing. But in this world, um, a lot of people will have rigs around it and want to be able to just put the lens directly on. Now, that's one part of it. So we do that, I then dial it back up, you can hear it click, the latch goes into place, and we're then mounted back. That's nice in and of itself. The significant thing is that this is now substantially reinforced. DSLR mount, um, E mount, is an SLR mount. Um, it's a very strong SLR mount, strong as any you'd care to compare it to. However, once you start making a camera like this, people start taking them out in the jungle, taking them outside, and of course we developed the mount to be very flexible. So that means that people have been getting adapters and they've been putting on not just other brands of um, stills lens, but they've been putting on B4 lenses, PL lenses, heavy PL cabrios, beautiful pictures, but they're big heavy lenses. Um, 
This new support here is designed to take the weight of any lens you might care to put on it. So really, that is now incredibly robust and will be able to hold whatever you want and is a significant improvement on this camera. Would you be able to use the same type of adapters that you were able to use with the original FS7? So. Uh, absolutely, the mount is, is identical. And indeed, when it comes to any accessories, the body is fundamentally the same. The only restriction I would say is that if you have, and I'm aware of one cage from one manufacturer, which has something that runs down the front here, um, in that case, you might find that this wheel is impeded in its movement. Mm -hmm. But aside from that, everything else should work. Um, so we've, we've really tried not to reinvent things too much. Um, so all of your adapters, all of that stuff, that still works. It's still an E-mount, it's just the way you attach something to it is different. The reinforcement won't get in the way. So that's pretty straightforward. Um, I'll come back to the lens. The next thing I'll talk about is all this stuff across the top here. So this entire mechanism along here looks pretty similar, but when you get close up is actually different. Um, this whole mic bracket is stronger. Uh, we run through here. We have now a separate lug to control from here and here, which is nice because previously that was on a single one. So if you undid it, the whole thing would suddenly fall down, which wasn't what you needed. You had to hold a couple of things in different places to do that. This rod here is now square, um, which is much nicer because it means that you don't get any horizontal pivot um, along one axis on that, which was another thing that people had requested from us. We've then got the loop, which is familiar to us, of course. We can flip that up and do this kind of thing with it. But if I take it off, we can have a look at the top of it. And on top, we can see that this now doesn't move. Um, we still, of course, have to be able to move one of them so that we can latch it and unlatch it. But it means that putting it on is as simple as this. So that's become much, much simpler. Another thing which we've included is this great little cover, which also comes with it. So if I take this one off, like so. We can then see we've got this. Now this is useful for a couple of things. Firstly, and I'll attach it in a moment, we can whip it up and we can see it's a nice little hood for it. But of course, the other thing people were requesting for us was a simple mechanism to protect the viewfinder display while it's in a bag or something like that. And again, this just latches on. There's only a single moving catch on it. Put that on there and away we go. So that's now safe in your bag as well. And just flip it up and then you've got a nice little hood for outdoor viewing as well. Um, Internally, one of the big changes is that we've included support for the REC 2020 color space. Now, a lot of people have had a lot of questions about this. We don't cover, this camera can't see the entire REC 2020 color space. There isn't any camera on Earth that can, and even if it could, there aren't any devices that can display the whole 2020. What we're talking about when we've included that feature is that we can map the colors that this camera can see and that's still quite a lot. It's still far more than 709. It's still more than P3. It's not as much as its bigger brothers, the F55 and 65. They have a very special color filter array that allows them to see, from the top of my head, around 80% of all of what Rec 2020 is. Um, so it'll allow you to see more. The key thing is that if you're in a workflow where you're grading in a Rec 2020 world, archiving to Rec 2020, um, or on-set monitoring in 2020, you are then seeing exactly the right colors in the right place because 709 and 2020 don't directly overlap in that regard. So in terms of future workflows around color, that's another very significant thing. So it's more of a future proofing type of uh, a feature. It is, it is very much so. Um, people are starting to get asked for that type of workflow and this is then fully compliant with it. Uh, one of the things that I know changed on this camera is uh, some people have been complaining on the F uh, original FS7. The fact that you needed a, a, at least a screwdriver to adjust this handle. Can you tell me a little bit more about the new mechanism that comes with the new smart grip? Absolutely. So let me have a look at this. So one of the big things, of course, is that we now have two of these lugs here, which allow us to be able to move this arm and lock it in place without having to get a key or or a coin or something else out, which is a, a very nice feature. Now, the other nice thing that's worth pointing out, which a lot of people might not notice, is we've also got now a hole here. Um, and that there means that I could then take this out, put this in its place, and then mount this handle here, or flip it, excuse me, flip it upside down and mount it here. 
So we then have other mounting options. So again, for people who've come from the FS5 and found it very convenient to have the control grip very close into the camera, um, holding it out in front or something like that, that's a way that that's now possible out of the box with this model as well. So this new lens is um, very exciting because, of course, we had a kit lens with the FS7, um, which is a great lens, a huge amount of lens for the money. It wasn't all things to all people, but it was never going to be. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's quite a long lens, and certainly for most people, they found they needed to take a shorter lens as well. And a lot of people asked us for a very much more all-round lens um, that they could take with them. So we've developed this, um, which is very, very exciting. Like the other one, it's f4 all the way through the zoom range. Um, it's par focal. But we've got a few other refinements on this which are particularly interesting. Now we've retained a zoom motor in it, um, which is nice if you need to be able to do something mechanically smooth. But if you want to be there quickly, we can now do a fully mechanical crash zoom just like that and be exactly where you need to at once, which was a really, really requested feature. Um, we can have a click or not a click on the iris wheel like that. Um, we have the zoom ring. We can also, by means of this switch here, change the direction of the zoom ring. So if you're used to zooming the other way, you can make it that way if you want to. Um, we've included um, 8 mil pitch teeth on this, um, on the focus ring. Um, of course, you've also got autofocus, manual focus, internal stabilization. So this is now the kit lens that's going to come with the FS7 II, um, which is a very exciting addition um, because a lot of people have been asking for just that. And when we launched it at IBC, we had a really fantastic response to it. Mm -hmm. uh, now, I know that the 28 to 135 covers full frame sensors. Is this the same? Would this cover a full frame sensor? Um, not quite, no. This is an APS-C lens. Um, so APS-C is then a little smaller than Super 35, um, well, than 35 mil, um, full frame 35, I mean, of course, um, but it will very accurately cover Super 35. Um, it's been very much made with Super 35 sensors in mind, along with APS-C sensors. Um, so in terms of the crop factor on Super 35, it's pretty negligible. So you'll find your 18 is pretty much exactly 18 and your 110 is pretty much exactly 110. So therefore, in terms of having a go-to one in everything lens, this is going to be, uh, we think, a very successful piece of kit. So there you have it, folks. This is the new Sony FS7 II. You can place your order right now with WTS Broadcast on WTSBroadcast.com or just Call in and one of our sales assistants would be more than happy to help you out. Thank you very much, Tom. Thank you. And I'll look forward to seeing you again.